Welcome in on a Sunday morning, 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk. And Chris, it's been a couple of weeks since me and you have got to do this. I know you keep working, but it feels like I haven't seen you in forever. How you been? Casey, I'm doing I'm doing well. Thank you. I thought you left me. I really did. Never. I thought you were gone. I mean, Scott's great, though. Scott is a phenomenal, um, phenomenal what do you call it, broadcaster, radio host? Yes, both okay. of those things. Okay. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal at his job. Sorry. He's, he's, a good, uh, he's a good ally to have. But, no, I couldn't leave you, Chris. I could never oh, good. do that. But uh, we are back in action, and we are back talking about something that is important and is important that you should know about. We will tell you about that in just a second. But, Chris, as we do, the Brochu Law Second Opinion, please let people know about it and how you may be able to help them. Absolutely. Second opinion, if you listen to the show at all, you know by now, if not – um, second opinion is quite simple. If you have a military claim, benefit, um, anything related to uh, any mi- military legal claim that you have a question about, if it's a benefit that somebody told you is the most you'll ever get, or you have a question about your rights, feel free to give us a call, uh, 904-201-1771. Again, 904-201-1771. What we do is we'll chat with you about your question or um, help you figure out what t- what sort of legal claim you have or military benefit that you may have. If we decide to work together, then we would enter into a fee agreement. There is no upfront cost for us to represent you. We're going to advance all costs on behalf of service members and military families and consumers. And um, the only way you have to pay is if you win. So that's the only way we get paid is if we win for you. Um, and obviously, we advance all those costs and only get those repaid if we win as well. So with that being said, second opinion, Scott and um, and I have talked about this on one of the other episodes where we talk about the Military Lending Act. Mm-hmm. So that would apply anybody that's got a one of those military installment loans. Think payday loan, short-term loan, one of those six-month to 36-month type loans. Um if you have a, uh, a timeshare that you're trying to get out of. And all of these types of loans that, that Scott and I were talking about are related to loans from 2019 till now. If you want us to screen those and give you a second opinion to, f- to figure out if that company may have violated federal law, give us a call. If you have a question about SGLI, VGLI, or TSGLI, that's your your um, military insurance under service member group life insurance, give us a call. We're happy to discuss that. And then anything obviously related to VA disability benefits, Camp Lejeune, and um, really any other military questions that you have. Today's episode is going to be about Camp Lejeune again. It's been, you know, several months since we've talked about it. Obviously now we've we've started to get uh, a little bit more info on what is happening with these claims. We've got a number of clients signed up and, and continue to sign more, so... With that being said, Casey, I think the best place to start is just to remind everybody what a Camp Lejeune claim yeah. may look like. So if your loved one served at Camp Lejeune between 1953 and 1987, you were a spouse, a civilian worker, a child, even a child in utero, you may have a claim uh, under this new Camp Lejeune Justice Act. Our firm doesn't uh, charge any military families up front to bring a, a military uh, Camp Lejeune claim. And if you uh, know anybody that was in the military between 53 and 87, they didn't have to be in the Marine Corps to have been stationed at Camp Lejeune. So there are actually a number of other branches that do a lot of military training in and around Camp Lejeune. And the reason is it's kind of this this ideal um, base because you've got water access and it's it's this um, massive military installation. So they do a lot of different training. So the amount of people that were there, you know, it's not not like some, you know, tiny, tiny base that I mean, we've got how many thousands of right. military installations. It's not like a tiny one that a few people went to. I mean, if somebody went to into the Marine Corps or uh, Special Forces between 53 and 87, they, they may have went to Camp Lejeune. 
And all you had to do, folks, to have or qualify for a potential Camp Lejeune claim, you had to be there drinking water for at least 30 days. So 30 days, we've talked about this before. That's not, you know, stopping through from New York on your way to Florida for a weekend. That doesn't qualify. But if you, you know, were at Camp Lejeune for 30 days and you have some of the adverse health uh, conditions or medical conditions that we're going to talk about later, you may have a Camp Lejeune claim. Yeah, absolutely. I think real quick, I want to just talk about this because we talked a little bit before the show. So two parts of this. The first one would be remind people how long they have to make a claim. And then after you do that, I want to get into the point of you just said, as you always do, you guys handle the costs for military families up front. And I know this is a long process. Like, we, you have a long time to file a claim. How does that work on your end, knowing that you're still years down the road of actually getting everything solved? You're taking claims right now, and you're, you're doing your job, but you're years away from even potentially seeing payout for these families. How do you guys just hold the fee- or up front it for that time until then? Yeah, the firms that we work with on this, I mean, we'll, we'll co-counsel these with, with – um, at least one other firm likely to. And the main reason is the claims have to originate out of North Carolina. So we'll, you know, we represent clients all over the country too. I mean, we've had cases just last year in California, Texas, Pennsylvania, New York. We just filed a class oh, action in, in federal court in Virginia this week. So um, the main, the main thing that, uh, the main thing that you do is, is the, the firm will, we'll figure out, okay, where are we at? Because we've got to retain experts as well. So it's not just, hey, you know, we'll file these claims and wait around. I mean, we've got a lot of work to do on our end, which is why you shouldn't wait. Mm -hmm. So although the the statute of limitation is going to be open for two years, so that would get us through July of 2024, the, the real time restraint with a Camp Lejeune claim is that we need enough time to research, hire these medical experts if we need to at the administrative level, request all of the records either through 2122A through the VA or um, FOIA or any other type of request to get these personnel files. We need to make medical requests any civilian facilities. And then, you know, we've got to give the military six months, right? Department of the Navy gets six months to review a Camp Lejeune claim. So, you know, the, the pre-suit investigation, the waiting for the Navy to adjudicate the claim, we're probably already looking at around nine months. Yeah. So it's not, you know, it seems like two years, but frankly, you know, you, you'd rather get it filed than be rushing around the last month or two trying to figure out and kind of parcel together a claim because here's the other thing. And this is really important. This is why, you know, hiring a VA accredited attorney is probably so important with these Camp Lejeune claims or somebody that that files claims against the government. The reason is everything that you argue at the administrative level is what you're going to be arguing to the federal court when you file the lawsuit. So you can't you can't sandbag them and be like, oh, yeah, this is a you know, this case is worth X amount. And then you get to to the federal filing, you're like, this case is worth $10 million. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Right. Everything in your administrative claim is going to be reviewed by the federal court and that federal judge, and you can't slow roll it. So that's obviously important to know. We do you know, different types of military claims, so we know that. But that's going to be a really big kind of hurdle to get these first claims submitted because the vast majority of these – my humble opinion, we're, we're not going to really know if my theory is correct until Feb- around February. Like, I guess we should revisit this around then, uh, at least this talking point. Okay. And what I'm talking about is, does the military or the U.S. government play ball and pay out some of these claims? Do they outright deny all these claims and prepare them all to litigate them? Or do they do nothing? So those are their options for Camp Lejeune at the administrative level. They either accept the claim and pay out whatever you put on that form. They deny the claim, and now you have the right to litigate it, or they do nothing, in which case you have to wait 180 days. 
and I, I'm sorry, I keep saying six months. Technically, it's 180 days. Mm-hmm. I mean, so so just as a, a non a civilian, let's just put it that way, not a lawyer, not military. When I hear the three options that you just gave me, uh-huh. I feel like I know which one it's like it likely would be. But and again, if you can't really comment on it, uh, don't. But of those three options you just gave me, like, how do you foresee this playing out? And I what think you can answer. I think truly, you know, well, let me ask you, what do you think is what do you think happens? I mean, I, in your civilian non-legal opinion, what do you think happens? It just seems like it would be the don't don't pay it out right away. Like that just doesn't seem like it would happen. So I think it would be the don't do anything and go to litigation would be my guess. I think that's that's a pretty good point. I think the only the only way in my mind that I think they'd get paid. So basically with and this is again just just kind of my opinion in in reviewing all of this sure. again. We haven't had any rulings from the judge. We haven't seen how the court is going to um uh, rule on any of these issues. We haven't seen how the government's going to defend any of these these issues. So this is all kind of just trying to parcel through mm-hmm. what we know about the statute. But I think at this point, because the duty and breach element, you know, were met when they created the statute, and obviously we've got, you know, all of our clients have s- significant injuries. I mean, cancers, yeah, um, birth defects brain injuries, um, ovarian removal, miscarriages. I mean, a number of, uh, uh, one stuff, of the yeah. significant things we're seeing is a lot of tooth decay. Really? So just about well, every single sense. one of the clients that we've come across, but, but that hasn't necessarily been connected. So what that all boils down to is proximate cause. So that's where, where I think some of these might get paid. I think, I think if a, if a, and this is what we try to do on our end, if we can connect the toxic water exposure to, you know, the cancer and not us, right? Because I don't have the medical background to be able to do that. Right. So that's why we hire these experts. experts. Yeah. You know, whether it's a treating professional, right? The the doctor that the veteran or or um or spouse went to, you know, the the cancer doctor or the oncologist that says, okay, yeah, this is what's going on. And the only way you get that is if you're exposed to benzene right or or whatever and then they're like well i was at camp lejeune for three years you know yeah and and they're not you know the the spouse was never in the military you know they they um didn't have any significant exposure to to toxic um water right Mm -hmm. besides this one occasion um or or time of their life i think that's where the military could say you know we believe that this expert is correct yeah because their expert will then review that and say yeah is that is does that meet you know the threshold of what we because again the military knows how they're going to pay these claims does it meet the threshold of what we're looking for yeah those claims i think have a reasonable chance of getting paid out the more difficult claims where you have um a number of things going on and i'm not going to Sure. Reveal what the defenses might be because I don't need to. You don't need to help anybody. No. Um, <laughs> I represent military families. I, do. I don't. I don't do anything against them. But I think uh, the cases that I have that may be a bit more challenging. Mm. Um, then I think that those will be uh, ones that would just. And I don't. Again, I'm with you. I don't know if they deny it because once they deny it, then you can file right away. Right. I think they'd probably just. Again, un- under the law, they're allowed to do that, just not answer. Um, and we have potentially a million, million claimants here. Yeah. So not, not our firm, but in general, right? So that's going to be the biggest thing that the government's going to have to combat is, okay, which one of these do we just get rid of by paying, and which one of these are we going to fight? And the, I will give you one example of, of one that I think is a legitimate claim but one that I don't think would be necessarily paid right away. What you got? Uh, I've got a client that was has a DD, uh, excuse me, a DD two fourteen from uh, so basically when they discharge from the military, that shows they're at Camp Lejeune okay. for a few years, and a death certificate where it shows that they died of Parkinson's in okay. the eighties, right? Mm-hmm. We don't have a whole lot of records from 
the 50s, the 80s. I mean, it's yeah. unless the military has it or they kept them at their house, civilian hospitals keep them for 10 years. And we're way over that. Yeah. So, I mean, we're we're not – that's a pretty difficult task to – overcome but again we've got a dd-214 that the military knows there, they were yeah. there and we've got a death certificate that shows the cause of death i i think you can make an argument you know and i think I, I, I think but again is it a is is there a material fact in dispute probably yeah. that's probably going to take some discovery probably you yeah, know that's a fascinating just idea that i mean because to me again civilian non-lawyer non-military makes sense right we've got the proof that they were there we know now that people that were there and drinking the water have these problems so yeah i think it's it's an interesting one and someone will have to argue it i think you'll have to argue it and that's what you're good at so uh, by the way if you're listening and you you think you might have a case here you need chris's help 904 201 1771 or you can send him an email case at bro shoe law Dot com, which is B R O C H U and then law L A W dot com. Uh, Chris, how you, you mentioned uh, a, a client that you just have, but overall, this is still new, still a fairly new thing in terms of people being able to file suits for this and contact you and have you help with them. How's it going? Like, how, how many clients are you getting a day or just often? Like, how many people are you seeing really need your help with this? I'm not going to reveal how many clients have called me sure, um, because I think that's likely proprietary. But what I will say is that I get calls on a weekly basis from new clients that are just hearing about Camp Lejeune. And one of the things I will say, too, there is so much misinformation out there. I mean, you and I talk about this. When you and I talk about pre-show about what we're going to talk about, we yeah. talk about all right, let's talk about this this week. Let's talk about that, right? When we talk about Camp Lejeune, the first thing you tell me is what? That I'm seeing commercials on TV all the time. Radio the station, radio, right? Yeah. I mean, the the ads on TV. I mean, it's it's everywhere. I was on a flight recently back home. Like, mm-hmm. like we were visiting um, my wife's family. We were coming back home. On the, on the TV on the plane, there's a Camp Lejeune ad. And I'm like, how... I didn't it's even crazy. know. I didn't even know that that TV had ads, but I'm like, how would somebody, right? Yeah. So I point. think that there are a lot of really good folks out there, a lot of really good attorneys that are that are taking this matter head on and going to be able to represent military families, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I I was representing military families way before Camp Lejeune, and I'll be representing military families way after Camp Lejeune, right? This is like what I do. Right now, I help injured people. I help civilians. I help consumers. I represent people. But the reason that we we talk about this show um, and only talk about military topics is because nobody talks about it. The only thing anybody wants to talk about related to military claims and military legal rights are VA disability. Snooze fest, right? I mean, everybody knows yeah. VA disability exists, right? right? And it's important but the reason why I say snooze fest is because can we talk about anything else? Can we talk about the other issues that are plaguing military families that nobody wants to have a discussion about? Like the fact that there are at least, I don't even know how many military lenders out there that are allowing loans over 36% MAPR, that are allowing military families to roll over or refinance the same installment loan with proceeds from the same lender for a different loan, Right. They're requiring mandatory allotment. They're requiring a bank account as a security interest. These are huge issues too, right, Yeah. that are affecting service members and their dependents. But we've got so many other things that people are concerned with that nobody wants to talk about that. So that's why I think it's so important that this show is about protecting military families, Mm -hmm. especially because we've got to kind of – swim through the trash a little bit with the misinformation and Camp Lejeune is a great example. I mean, the, the amount of advertisers out there selling leads, this is, this is the most common one that I get. And I've had, I had two calls. This is, this is true. Two calls with, um, advertising companies that wanted me to pay them to find leads. Right. Okay. 
and and they're really legitimate companies like they follow all of the rules and all of that stuff which is important but besides those two credible reputable companies who probably find decent leads there are so many others on social media and everywhere else that are just they have no idea basically if this is this is their slogan 1953 to 87 cancer file a claim today i've heard it there are millions in comps i mean it's just it's absurd so that is the most common call that i receive somebody has found me um and the military community is is really um they're really great i mean it's like as grassroots as it gets if you help one you, you they're gonna tell their whole network about you yeah but it's hard to kind of break into so Camp Lejeune, I mean, I'm getting calls from people and they're like, yeah, I see ads every day on TV, but I don't trust them. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, again, don't, non, non-military, but like I, I see it and I'm like, mm, don't trust it. Just knowing the information that I've gotten from you, just having these conversations, right? I'm like, I, I don't know if I would call. And like, I, I start to wonder, like, I feel bad for military families who could see Again, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that all the ads are non-legit, right? I don't know that to be true. But what I do know is if I'm watching TV at 2.30 in the morning and that ad comes on, I'm not going to feel great about it. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I, I feel bad for the military families that, you know, may have contacted some of these non-legit places when they could have contacted you. And obviously that's what you're trying to do, get the word out there to help military families. Chris, I got a question for you. I'm going to ask you on the other side of the break because we are up against it. But I do wonder with all the ads we're seeing and I want to try to relate it to something. And I know that's not a great tease, but I want to get your opinion on it because I think you'll have uh, really good insight from a law perspective. So we will do that on the other side of the break. 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk, protecting military families with Chris Brochu. More to do right after this. The 7 o'clock hour, 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk. We are protecting military families with the one and only Chris Brochu from bro shoe law uh talking camp lejeune a lot of good information in the first half hour go back and check it out wokv.com or if you want to see a video version of the show you can find it on chris's website chris's youtube bro shoe law is the place for all that information justin with nova productions hooking us up with a video version of the show each and every week so you can see it every single week and go back and watch old episodes as well with a video version which for some is better than just audio. You get to see it. It feels like you're really there, Chris. It feels like you're really there. <laughs> exactly. We got more to do, but before we go back into Camp Lejeune and dive into it, uh, you got something really cool coming up uh, in November. Uh, just go ahead and, and tell us about it because I'm very I'm, – it's cool to see that you guys are doing this, and I'll just let you explain it, but uh, it's a really cool thing I think you're doing. Sure thing. My wife and I are planning a um, an event with Jacksonville Humane Society. I don't know if Jacksonville Humane Society has started um, putting any anything up on social media about it, but it's going to be sponsored by Broshu Law. My wife and I are going to be there, and basically we it's going to be at the Southside location, and we're going to um, sponsor an event called Pets for Vets. So if you have, if you're active duty, National Guard, reservist, one day muster duty, you know you're a veteran. Yeah, you have somebody in your family who's mil- you know military. Um, we're going to sponsor the event so that your pet adoption fee on veterans day is free. So if you and your family want a four legged friend and, uh, you want to add another to the mix, we're, we're welcome. We're welcoming you to our event. It's going to be on, um, November 11th, that Friday, it's going to be noon to four, noon to four. It is on a Friday. I'm sorry. That's, um, you know, the only day that we could really do it around. Thankfully, we got Veterans Day, but obviously Friday is going to sure. be a little tough for people. But if you um, if you can bring your military family out, you know, once the kids get out of school or something like that, any of the uh, dogs or cats are going to fit under the scope of our event. Come in. We will uh, we'll pay for the adoption fee. We're really trying to um, clear the shelter and we think it's a great cause. We love we love Jacksonville Humane Society and, um, yeah, yeah. No, so. it's it's an awesome thing. Uh, it's it's cool you're doing it. Uh, first fifty families, right? Military families. Yeah, I don't know how many pets they'll have. We were um, 
We think it's going to be at least 50 adoptions, Okay. Um, dogs and cats. The the shelter said that their kitten, their kitten season kind of goes with the hurricane season, so I think it'll be kind of I get that. done by then. Yeah. Um, but there'll be plenty of adult dogs, adult cats, maybe some kittens left. But um, we really, if you've ever been in there, it's such a great facility and great cause, and um, I don't think there's anything better than adopting a pet. Yeah. I mean, all the, all, I'm, I'm really allergic to dogs. Otherwise, you know, really? a dog would be great. Yeah. I don't, I don't tell mer- very many people that I guess I just you told just a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. Like, like, uh, like bad respiratory stuff. I love dogs. Don't get me wrong. But, um, yeah, so I've always, I've always had cats and, um, we always adopt them from the shelter and they're the best. Yeah. I mean, you don't, you don't need to pay a grand to get a great pad yeah you know absolutely and if yeah. you're not going to watch the video version of this which we encourage you to on chris's website chris had a big smile on his face when he just said that talking about uh the pets and the his cats and all that so uh yeah we we encourage you uh we'll tell you more about that as we get closer to it but just kind of an early heads up that that will be something chris is doing which is awesome no other way to put it all right chris let's dive back into this and before we get back into the question I have for you. Uh, we were just talking about this. On your website, brochulaw.com, you guys have a Camp Lejeune Research, uh, research Center. I do right. Believe. And uh, you guys are working hard on that to give the information that people need to know. And it kind of goes in with my question, what we were just talking about uh, before the break, how you got so many people advertising for this and you were making the point that you know you serve military families every day when some of these other law firms may not but putting that Camp Lejeune Research Center up on your website just kind of give people what they can find in there and how it, how it could help them before they even contact you or any other lawyer my a lot of my clients have found the Camp Lejeune Resource Center to be kind of the quick hitter hey history water sites years contamination injuries you know cancer and other serious illnesses and and really gotten to dive deep in that you know another great resource as well and i i wish that we had five hours to talk about this because i'd break down every single topic but obviously as you and i do these shows we'll have kind of one main topic so today we're going to talk more about like cancers and yeah and illnesses that that i've seen and some of the other ones that may be um connected to toxic water exposure but um, a lot of the the clients that I've discussed this with have saw on YouTube. They're like, "Wow, you post really substantive videos, so I can watch for forty five minutes. You talk about yeah the the well sites and the and the history of it and all these different things and and who may qualify and so I think that's really the biggest thing is just before you ever and I'm not even saying to sign up with me. I mean I I say this in every legal area and military area that I do, it's like anything. I want you to get as much information as possible so that you and your family can make the best decision for you. And if I'm that decision, great. And if I'm not, no problem. I mean, the whole, the whole purpose of spreading the word about all this is we need more good guys fighting bad guys. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not saying, you know, that this Camp Lejeune is us versus the government. I'm not saying that. I mean, it, literally is in the case, right? I'm not saying that right. the government is always the bad guy yes. at all. But my point is, in the lending type cases, if nobody is willing to stand up to some of these predatory lenders, the conduct never stops, right? So with um, with Camp Lejeune, my biggest advice is do your research. Do not just dial the 800 number and sign up right away. Read about it. Figure out who... Who, you know, has read about Camp Lejeune and knows and knows kind of what's going on there, not just the time period. And then the other part of that, too, is um, figure out what firm, you know, you like. Call a few firms, right? Screen it out. Um, that's that's really probably the best advice because, you know, I have clients all the time. They're like, hey, I'm going to call you and then I'm calling this firm down the street to see what they have to say. Great. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm not, I'm not like the type of guy that's going to be like, oh, they called me. I'm going to, I w I'm going to keep them from calling anyone else. Like if they want to call two other law firms and figure out what they have to say about it, feel free. Yeah. The guy down the street wants to do it for, you know, a fraction of the price, go for it. You know, I mean, you can get, you can buy a lot of different types of 
pasta sauces at Walmart. We okay. talked about this before. But um, this isn't necessarily something that I would want to buy great value on. So yeah. I'd, I'd probably... I'd probably try to find an attorney that was VA accredited that knows kind of what it's like to sue the military or or file a claim or file an administrative claim. And there are going to be a lot of different types of of injuries and medical conditions out there that may be applicable. So I just want to run through it real quick. Yep. You know, we've got a ton of different types of cancers. So they've got uh, bladder cancer, brain cancer, um, Cervical cancer, esophageal, gallbladder, kidney, liver, Hodgkin's lymphoma, leukemia, right? They've got lung cancer, all these different types. And I've got I've got the entire list, you know, rectal, prostate, prostate pancreatic, ovarian. I've got the entire list on my website, brochulaw.com at the Camp Lejeune Resource Center. And if you ever have a question too, I, I'm happy to speak with you. Um, Send a message to case at brochulaw.com. That's case, C-A-S-E, at brochulaw.com. And again, even if you just want to talk about it, we're happy to speak with you and and advise you at least on what's going on with the claims and how the process would work. And, um, you know, don't be be shy to to reach out. We're not going to make you pay us to talk to us or make you sign anything to talk to us. I mean, you can call us, ask about it if you like it. We'll, We'll... and we think that you fit our criteria, you know, we can get a fee agreement in place. The other ones that are that are serious illnesses but may not fall into that cancer category mm-hmm. would be female infertility, um, infant death or, or childhood death. Um, so that was a big thing at Camp Lejeune. They have, I think, I think Ed Bell talked about this, around five grave sites that are just dedicated to children under five. So infants and toddlers. Let's stay there for just a second. I know you want to run through the rest of these illnesses, but that's got to be, at least in my mind, and I could be wrong, please correct me, but it feels like that's going to be some of your toughest cases to argue, at least from my mind. If you're, or, or maybe I'm way off, but it feels like if there might not be the documentation that could be needed for like a child death in that case. Am I way off there? I'll, I got to ask you this question again as a civilian non-lawyer because I want to see your yeah. your argument here. You'd be good for the government. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what do you uh, what what basis would you have? Because that child probably was in the hospital. True. I just wonder if since we're going back so many years, I wonder if like the document, like just having the physical documents, I guess would be my question. No, like, do a, they still exist? It's a really good point because they, they probably, they did have a major hospital. So I've got several clients that were born at Camp Lejeune, the hospital there. Mm-hmm. Um, so that hospital would have records. And the only reason why I know this is because I've got a client that told me, oh yeah, they reached out to me in 2012 and said, hey, we know you're at Camp Lejeune. Tell us what illnesses you have. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. So so that's why I say I know I've seen tossed around out there a million claimants, but whenever I hear the, and I'll say this with air quotes, mm-hmm. at fault party, tell me how many claimants may have been yeah. injured, I think to myself, is that their number or is that the actual number? Yeah. So uh, I don't know what the answer is. I guess we're going to see. By July of 2024, how many claims are filed or paid? But yeah, yeah. So to to get back to your question, I think I think you're onto something, but it wouldn't cause me to deny the claim. I just think it might make it more difficult. Yeah. Um, but unless the government can show, this is my my opinion, that there was some other cause, some other genetic or yeah defect. Well, when that child dies of name one of these conditions and all they have ever done is live at Camp Lejeune, right? Because they're an infant. True. I would, (laughs) I would make them have to come up with evidence to show that it wasn't. wasn't. Yeah, Yeah. I think. Yeah. Now, if they, if they have the medical records to support that it was related to some other genetic link or something like that. Yeah. Maybe some, some SIDS argument. I don't know. Yeah. I guess I just was wondering about the documents but i guess as long as you you have them and yeah again to that point 
like, I guess I kind of forget at times that, like, not that the government's trying to hide anything, but at times I'm like, are the documents fully accessible? And I guess, like, my weird conspiracy theory minds like they're not but i guess they, they actually no i do. think the government does a pretty good job of keeping records but mm-hmm. i think like anybody i mean it's just we have got i mean at any time you know especially in war times even more service members but yeah how many millions of military families since 1953 do they have personnel and medical for right and i mean there there are cases of like a fire that took out right, like right. a bunch of records i mean there are a number of things that I think can be argued, but the bottom line for me is this to meet to to meet with me, you don't need to have any of these documents. A lot of times I'll have a client that's like, Chris, I can't get a copy of my DD two fourteen. I can't get a copy of my personnel file. I don't have my VA medical records. Mm-hmm. Don't sweat it. That's why I have a VA my VA accreditation. All we have to do is submit a twenty one twenty two A and any other VA documents that are going to, it's similar to a FOIA, but because you have this accreditation, you can get access to it. They'll send a CD or they'll send us whatever they have. And we can try to parcel through it that way. The only real thing that we need help with. And a lot of times it's just because the, the military family, the spouse, the veteran has greater access than us without us having to request it and go through all these legal hoops would be some of the civilian docs. So when, you know, I have a client that says, yeah, we were going to see this oncologist and they connected, you know, bladder cancer to Camp Lejeune, yeah. right? One of the cases I have. Well, the oncologist would much rather work with the family than work with me. So so all the spouse, usually it's free. The spouse is just like, hey, doc, can I get the records? And they just bring them to me. Yeah. Or they mail them in or whatever. And then and then when they mail them in, we scan them and send them back. But the um the bottom line is you don't need to have you don't need to come to me and prove the case. That's what you're hiring us to do. Right. You right, know? right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that you mentioned that, Casey, because that is that is such a big sticking point for so many military families. They're like, Chris, I don't have any way of proving this. And I'm like, Don't worry, that's what you're hiring me True. for. That is your job. I yeah, get that yeah. all the time about VA VA disability. I had a client that was like Chris, I know that my cancer is related to, you know, nuclear exposure and I I can't figure out my my ship, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, don't worry about it. You know, that's what we're going to help you with. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Uh, I just, it popped in my head as you were uh, kind of discussing it. But anyway, I know you have some more uh, illnesses you wanted to run through. On your- yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm glad that you talked about that because that, that's going to roll into our next topic, which is damages, right? And And that hopefully will be, enough information for today. I don't want to, you know, overwhelm uh, this topic because I think like each each single area that we cover could be an entire three hour, three hour episode. So the other ones that are that are main ones that we see cardiac issues, especially in infants, like kids that were born there, the tooth decay one was big. Yeah. Birth defects, another big one. Um, I've seen at least two now with birth defects and um, and and brain defects. And um, any any involved with ovarian uh, removal or miscarriages, mm-hmm. especially at a young age, those are those are really. Um, I, I've seen a fair amount of those, and those are really interesting to me in a kind of in a different viewpoint because of the fact that you've got someone that's so young with no genetic link that is getting this random you know, diagnosis. Yeah. And they're like, I've never done any, you know, they're 20 years old and they're having their ovary removed. Yeah. It's just, it, it's really, um, just unfortunate that so many of our military families are going through this, but immune disorders, any fetal malformation, miscarriages, like we talked about neurobehavioral disease, Parkinson's is a big one. I've seen several of these ones that would be in their renal toxicity or renal uh, toxicity and disease, scleroderma, uh, soft tissue sarcoma was one on there. There was um, uh, a few related to kidney and, and nerve and immune disorders as well. So if you have any, you know, if you have any medical conditions that are that are unique or or not related to any genetic link or anything like that, give us a call. We're happy to speak to you about it. And we're not just focused on 
these cancer type ones. I mean, if somebody thinks that they can connect it, please give us a call. We've had at least two calls now from um, spouses that basically what happened is they had a child after they were at Camp Lejeune and the child had um, a birth defect. And it's a really fascinating argument because the egg, right, the woman's egg wasn't fertilized until after they left Camp Lejeune. Right. But if the woman is only given a certain number of eggs and is subjected to toxic water exposure, yeah, I don't know if you have to be like there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's super hard. It's, yeah. it's it's one of those issues like I don't know if legally you could win, but I've had two calls now about s- something related to a very similar factual scenario and I think it is quite interesting because yeah. it's like, well, is is that the child's claim because they weren't born yet? So probably not because they weren't in utero. Yeah. But would the wife have a potential female infertility claim? because of the future damage to her children yeah. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. i don't it's it's really um I, I don't know it's 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 one of those things that that's why these are not like a one size fits all mm-hmm. that's no, what drives actually. me bonkers when i see people saying like camp lejeune class action it's like this is not this is not a class action you can't you there's no commonality between somebody that has liver cancer and parkinsons yeah you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's not the same. You're right about that. But uh, hey, Chris, before we get out of here, you just mentioned it though the damages, and I was kind of asking about this in the break, and you described to me how there's money set aside. Uh, just kind of explain that to uh, the listener and kind of how the damages and how that will work when we get to that point. So the damages are going to be just the same way that we represent families in injury cases. So we never talk about it on the show, but here's the. Here's the shameless plug. We also represent families in automobile accidents, premises liability cases, negligent security. So if somebody's harmed at a um, at a local uh, business, right? Like a, a sh- if they were shot at a business or they were uh, assaulted or sexually abused or anything like that. So in those cases, and similar to Camp Lejeune, you're going to look at um, economic and non-economic damages and Basically, the way to think about that is what are your um, current and um, past medical bills? What are your future medical bills? Pain and suffering. So if you have a um, a permanent injury, what are your lost wages? What do you have for mileage getting to and from the doctors? What do you have for prescriptions, right? So you're paying for prescriptions. Um, what, about, what about loss consortium, loss of of the ability to um, live the life that you want with your loved one, right? You don't have the same um, marital life. You don't have the same um, intimate um, relationship that you once had. You know, you you can't hold down a job because of all the doctor's appointments or, um, you know, you're going to chemotherapy now three times a week. There are so many factors that go into it. And then the other thing is, too, age, right? So somebody that's that's a female who had her ovary removed at 20, who was at Camp Lejeune, who wasn't able to ever have children, her damages are going to be completely different than a veteran that died at 85 of um, liver cancer. They they may both have claims under Camp Lejeune, but their damages will be different. Yeah. Because, because the other part is that 85-year-old might not be working any longer, whereas she, if the female infertility or the ovary removal mean means that she, you know, got divorced, couldn't have kids, um, you know, was no longer able to uh, keep her job because she had doctor's appointments or couldn't work anymore. Yeah. Those are all factored in. So that's why we can't say like, all right, Camp Lejeune claims are worth this much. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like, um, like if you ever look at the um, NFL concussion fund, mm-hmm. we were talking about the funds earlier. Yeah. That's one of those where you can say, okay, Parkinson's is worth X. I mean, they've the the NFL, and again, it's been a while since I looked at this, and so nobody hold me to it. I think it was like over a billion dollar fund for for any of these medical conditions. 
but I just remember when we when we read about it, it was like this medical condition equals X amount of money. If the U.S. government gets to a point where they have a fund and appoint a special master, it could go that way where they say, OK, if you can prove, you know, supported by medical evidence and an expert that your toxic water exposure is linked to your Parkinson's diagnosis or the estate brings the claim on behalf of somebody that passed away mm -hmm. and the government agrees, then we'll send the claim to the special master and they'll give you X. I don't, I mean, who knows how this claim is going to get sorted out. That could be, I mean, that's what they did in the 9-11 Victim Fund. We've got cases, um, terrorism cases against Iran um, that uh, we have a few clients with. That's, that, those claims are basically once we default Iran in federal court, then um, once you have the judgment, then you take the judgment to the special master and then they basically submit the claim to the fund that fund is like the second iteration of 9-11 victim fund i got you and basically for for those claims what we're doing is we're representing military families that were severely injured or killed um in it in a specific combat zone um and where the combat zone had a um a terrorist that was planting um or or manufacturing a bomb that blows up a service member mm -hmm. funded by iran Ah. So that's how there was money left over. So it rolled into the, now the second iteration of the 9-11 Victim Fund. That's how these military families. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha so gotcha. I don't know what's going to end up happening um, with the U.S. government, if they're going to set aside a, an amount of money, if they're going to have a fund. We haven't gotten there yet. But the biggest thing that you have to do is you can't wait. Yeah. I don't mean you got to call me, but you got to do something about it or you're going to waive your right. Because once this statute of limitation runs... It's the the door is locked forever. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. And you want to take advantage of that while you can. You can give Chris a call, 904 201 1771, or you can send him an email, case at brochulaw.com, or just go to brochulaw.com. He has a Camp Lejeune Resource Center. You can find out what you need to know, and then you can contact Chris. You can do it in either order, but the information is there on Chris's website for you to look at and use whenever you need it. Chris, I enjoyed it. We'll do it again next Sunday morning. Absolutely. Thanks, Casey.